Final Fantasy Tactics for the PS1 is considered one of the greatest games in the Final Fantasy series. It's also considered one of the most frustratingly difficult. In this episode of the RPG Fanatic, we'll explore why. Final Fantasy Tactics is a spin-off to the numbered Final Fantasy series, or at least it originally was. Actually, if we really want to be technical, Final Fantasy Tactics set the ground floor for Vagrant Story, which can be considered a true sequel since it is set in the same world as Final Fantasy Tactics, although many hundreds of years in the future. Vagrant Story? What's that you ask? Well, Vagrant Story is another little-known RPG released by Square. One of these days I'll get around to reviewing it. Anyway, the really important thing to know is that this game is the brainchild of Yasumi Matsuno, previously well-known for the Ogre Battle series by Quest. In case you didn't know, in the 90s Ogre Battle was a series of popular strategy RPG games. When Square hired Matsuno, they assigned him the task of creating a strategy RPG game based on the Final Fantasy series. Thus, Final Fantasy Tactics was born. Yasumi Matsuno would go on to direct a number of projects for Square, namely Final Fantasy XII, but let's get back to talk about how it all started for him with Final Fantasy Tactics. Now the plot of the game is complicated and spans a number of years, but to summarize it as best I can, you follow the events of Ramza Belov. Ramza gets dragged into a battle between members of the royal family for the throne of the kingdom, known as the War of Alliance, and eventually uncovers the churches pulling the strings of both sides, trying to cause the royals to kill each other so the church can swoop in and get credit for saving the kingdom, making their political influence stronger. To help win over the people, the church is using a legend about the Zodiac Braves, a group of warriors who defeated the evil Lusavi creatures with the aid of 12 Zodiac Stones. What the church doesn't realize is the stones allow the Lusavi to possess the stone holders. Now in addition to Ramza's plot, we had the plot of Delita, a side character. Delita is a peasant who once served Ramza as a vassal, but after Delita's sister was killed by Ramza's brothers, Delita swears revenge on the aristocracy. Throughout the story we see him manipulate and eventually kill many of the royalty off, Although Delita is not an evil character, rather his goal is to change the world no matter the cost, and eventually become king. Delita's story intertwines with Ramza's because Delita assists Ramza, knowing that by doing so Ramza will kill off the Lusavi so that Delita does not have to. However, because Ramza is opposing the church, he is branded a heretic, and Delita becomes remembered as a hero that united the kingdom, even though Ramza did the majority of the work. In my opinion, the story for Final Fantasy Tactics is one of the best stories in any Final Fantasy games. It could give any fantasy novel a run for its money. I will openly admit that 70% of my love for this game is due to the plot and not necessarily the gameplay mechanics. Speaking of which, let's talk about the combat system. The game is a strategy RPG, meaning you control several characters who move independently across the battlefield, similar to chess. This means you can have several characters gain up on a single enemy unit. You also have to consider the movement range and the jumping ability of a unit, as the maps have distance and height levels. Paying attention to the terrain is important, for if a character is too far above or below a unit, they can't hit them with melee attacks, and if they're standing in deep water, they can't fight at all. Also, when you defeat enemies, within three rounds their corpse will vanish, turning into either a chest with an item or a crystal. If they turn into a crystal, your characters can learn one of the enemy's skills if they have unlocked the job for that skill. Or you could just have your character's HP and MP restored. Note that because the game comes with a very detailed tutorial accessible from the game menu, I didn't really need to explain all the mechanics involving combat. I do feel it is worth pointing out that the in-game tutorial is one of my favorite features of the game, because this is a very complicated system, and it helps a lot to have a video tutorial show you exactly what you need to do. I will talk about one central gameplay element, and that is the job system. This system is a more evolved form of the job system seen in Final Fantasy III and Final Fantasy V. Basically, to unlock new jobs, you need to gain certain levels and other jobs by accumulating job points. Job points are gained for basically doing anything in combat. You can also spend a character's earned job points to let them learn new abilities. However, a character has a limited amount of abilities they can use at any one time. The job system is basically a really complicated system of multi-classing. Jobs are also important because they determine by how much a stat increases when the character levels up. For example, a knight gains more HP and attack bonuses than a summoner does. By the way, look at that perfect ass on Shiva. Don't tell me you don't want to tap that. Now, many Final Fantasy games have mini-games, and Final Fantasy Tactics is no exception. In this game, it is Propositions, which is something you can access from bars and towns. In short, you can send some of your non-story character units on missions to obtain money, job points, and rare items. 
Propositions are completely optional, as the items you receive are not real items, but just conversation pieces. These treasures all make references to previous Final Fantasy games and serve as easter eggs for fans. Now, something I don't like about the system is that the chance for your characters to succeed at the mission is determined by the current jobs of the characters you send. Since there is no way to know which jobs are best unless you have a strategy guide from the creators, there is no way you can figure it out on your own. I mean, sure, some of them are obvious. The Master Math mission obviously requires a calculator. But many missions give such vague hints that it could be anything. Since I've already started criticizing the game, I'll cover all the things that irritate me about Final Fantasy Tactics. My first complaint is the translation. For the most part, it is pretty good, but there are a few areas where it is obvious the translator slacked off. Spiritual Forest? Don't you mean Haunted Forest? Blaze Gun? But it shoots ice elemental bullets? Don't you mean Frost Gun or something perhaps, you know, icy? The poor translation doesn't stop there. Ice Bracelet instead of Ice Breath. Then there is a summon spell for Lich. It says Rich. Ha <laughs> ha Fuck your couch! I'm Rich! Lich! Also, Final Fantasy Tactics is another one of these RPG games where the designers did not balance the encounters well. This is especially true at the start of the game, where there are battles against opponents who have unlocked jobs several tiers higher than your own characters, and you are usually vastly outnumbered. In order to proceed, you will need to grind around on battles quite a bit. The job system itself is somewhat confusing. In truth, there are only a few abilities that are worth a damn, and the majority have little to no long-term usefulness. Many are nothing more than a gimmick which might trigger once in a blue moon. Take Move on Lava, for example. How often do you think you ever fight on Lava in this game? In this entire game, there is only one map where this ability is even relevant. So the job system forces the player to decide ahead of time what jobs they will unlock and what abilities they will learn. I suppose this is where the strategy part of the game really lies. Another issue is the time investment each battle requires. Most battles take at least 10 minutes to clear, but sometimes you'll get to the 9 minute point and one of your characters will reach their zero death count, turning into a crystal. This means you'll need to reset the game or lose one of your units since once they reach the zero death count, they permanently die. It's also impossible to fully play the game without a strategy guide. The move find item ability is a perfect example of why. Most maps have items hidden on them, and to find these items, you need to move the characters panel by panel looking for them. This can take hours unless you have a strategy guide that can show you precisely where they belong. If you were to actually search every single map in the game for these items without a strategy guide, it could take you hundreds of hours to beat this game. At release, the strategy guide for Final Fantasy Tactics was made by Prima Games, notorious for the poor quality of their strategy guides. The Final Fantasy Tactics guide is a good example of what I mean. Some of its charts are wrong, it tells you incorrect information about the placement of hidden items, and some of its advice for boss battles is laughable. The worst is that the binding is terrible. As you can see, many of the pages have fallen out due to the poor quality of glue that was used. Still, playing this game without a strategy guide will leave you completely unprepared for the difficulty and unaware of many of the features the game offers. Additionally, the game should have told the player what job levels are needed to unlock other jobs right from the beginning. This info could easily have been incorporated in the Brave Story system menu. Without a strategy guide, you're going to waste tens of hours trying to get all your characters to unlock the jobs you want them to have because it's not immediately obvious to the player how jobs are unlocked or what jobs are even available. It is my belief that strategy guides should only be for when the player gets stuck beyond all hope or wants to find hidden secrets. You shouldn't need to study thick strategy guides just to play the fucking game normally. My final complaint is that the game has some trap points where you might have to start the whole goddamn game over again if you screwed up. See, there are about three points in the game where you fight three to four battles back to back with no opportunity to enter random battles to level up or restock supplies from towns. I call these the castle battles, and the game allows you to save in between these battles. If you aren't aware of how difficult battles are, you might end up saving after a battle without being strong enough to beat the next one. This would mean you have to start the whole fucking game over from the beginning. Wait, what the hell? Did you see that? What the hell? I didn't even move. I didn't even move. Did you see that? My characters didn't even move and I died. I died. Look at that. Watch it. Watch it. I am dying. It ramps out of that movie. Nobody on my team is moving. I am dying before my characters can even make a turn. This is so fucking stupid. Oh, come on! What the hell?